talk about backsliding Christian. The backslider dresses up as a true worshiper. Malachi chapter 1, verses 6, 7, and 8. He dresses up as a true worshiper. He's acting as a true worshiper. The Bible says, in, uh, I want to read the, that passage to you. Malachi 1, 6, 7, and 8. Isn't it true that a son honors his father and a worker his master? So if I am your father, where is the honor? If I am your master, where is the respect? God says, where is my respect, people? And uh, the, uh, the God of the angel armies is calling you on the carpet. You please despise me. You say, uh, then these people say, God says, you don't honor me. The people say, no, how do you, how, why do you say that, Lord? Why do you say that, Lord? No, how do we despise you? By your shoddy, sloppy, defiling worship. You ask, what do you mean defiling? What's defiling about it? When you say the altar of God is not important anymore, worship of God is no longer a priority that is defiling. When you offer worthless animals for sacrifices in worship, animals that you are trying to get rid of. The uh, Eugene Peterson translation, the message. You are offering to me animals that you are getting, getting rid of. The animals that you will throw in your waste paper, the, 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 the bin in your house, the waste bin in your house. Those are the animals you give, give me. Try that trick with your banker or your senator. Says, would you give that to your lead, to your political leader? Would you give that to somebody important? If the chief minister comes to your house or if the prime minister comes to your house, would you give him that? Would you, would you serve anybody what, what the, the remains of the you know, KFC chicken? The, those, those picket chicken wings? You, know, you, you order a bucket of chicken wings, you get 26 for a small packet, you eat them up and somebody comes in, you have nothing to serve them, you go on, who do you serve those bones to that guest that has walked in? But that's what you do! That's what you do! You dress up as a true worshipper and you give me second rate stuff! That's a mark of a backslidden Christian! You know, you give him second rate stuff and it comes to your treasure! You know what? Uh, in the New Testament, okay, the book of Malachi, there's a wonderful passage on tithing, I'm not going to get into that. But in the New Testament, what does the Bible say? In uh, John the Baptist, talking to his disciples said, if you have two shirts, give one. He's talking about giving 50% to God. Then Jesus looked at this woman who gave two coins in, the, in, in, a, in a temple. And uh, that woman gave 100% to God. And Jesus applauded her, gave her a standing ovation. So, uh, you know, uh, when we earned only 1,000 rupees, we didn't think much of giving 100 rupees to God. But now God has blessed us. We earn 80,000 rupees. And we think, 8,000 rupees? Oh my God, should I give 8,000 rupees to God? That very thought, my brother, my sister, tells you and me that we are on the road to backsliding. Because we want to give the second best to God. We want to give the second best to God. And there's another way we give second best to God. We, 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 not only with our treasures, but also with our time. If we think, well, you know, I have a call for ministry, but I don't want to come now. I don't want to, you know, you know finish my the, this MDF degree, which I'm able to learn thanks to this wonderful, thanks to the wonderful arrangement that our church has got with SABC. And you know, the call of God is upon me. And then this thought upon you, and then this thought comes. You think, well, let me come and serve God by taking early retirement when I earn, when I reach 50. But right now, I can't afford to miss that big fat six-figure salary that my company is paying. You know the call of God is upon you. And you know God is calling you. You know the avenues of ministry are there before. You know people are perishing. And you know this, uh, God, God really wants you to go. But because of a silly reason as money, you want to postpone. And you say, well, when I earn, when I reach 50 or 60 or 70, then I will serve God full time. You know what? I can tell you about this 14-year-old girl who died on May 14, 2012. 14-year-old girl who died on May 14, 2012. She came on our television set saying, I love you, Rasna. Her name was Tarumi Sachde. She said, I love you, Rasna. I do not know the full story. I may be wrong here, but I do not know if Tarumi Sachde such day, got onto her knees one day and said, Jesus, I love you. This one life I have, I give to you, Jesus. And I will live for you. Before, maybe, before she could do that, she passed away. The girl who said, I love you, Rasna, perhaps didn't say, I love you, Jesus. And before she could say, I love you, Jesus, passed away. Now, we don't know how long we are going to live. 
So that's now is the time to let it rip for Jesus. That's why when when I knew God's call was uh, was upon me to do the full time ministry, when I had a good, fairly good job in HSBC, and I could have continued a little longer in the corporate corporate life, God spoke to me and He said, "Do you want to serve me when you're re- uh, reaching retirement, when you're becoming a grandpa, when even going going for a lavatory journey will be tedious? You know, go, go to the lavatory. Grandpa has to call two grandsons and walk." and go to the lavatory now is the time to do missionary journey not when you're old that time even lavatory journey will be tedious now come now give me your time now don't give me your second best give me the best years of your youth you and I said yes Lord I said yes Lord here am I reporting for duty tell me what, what do I need to do God is speaking to you God is speaking to you you know if we are giving second best to God then we are in the process of backsliding.